Hi YouTube, happy Monday. We might have an interruption. If we do, I'll either um, shut it down and start up again later or just continue depending on what I think is best at the time. So maybe not though, you never know. But I've been sabotaged the last couple days. I can't prove anything. You know, when somebody's gonna deny something that happens, Sometimes you, it's no sense even saying anything about it because they're going to deny it anyway and you can't prove it. That's my topic about narcissists today. Uh, don't, don't, I mean, they do that push pull thing like, I love you today, I hate you tomorrow, or um, I respect you today, I don't respect you tomorrow. Or you're my soulmate today, but there might be somebody better out there tomorrow or that type of thing. Whether it's your parents, your spouse, your friends. If you have a narcissist in your life, brother, sister, whoever, and they have a tendency to be like that, it's a constant thing in their life where... I call it waiting for the other shoe to drop. That, you know, like a narcissist will use like no noise pollution, speech, music, dropping their keys, throwing something, or um, drop a shoe and you know the other shoe's going to drop. I call it waiting for the other shoe to drop. I know they have two feet. I know they're going to drop that other shoe. Once I hear that first shoe drop, rest assured the other one's going to drop too. So, um, just so, just to keep you alert, just to remind you because, um, the hundreds of times that I wish somebody had reminded me so my heart wasn't ripped out when these things happened to me. It will save you from maybe having heart failure or a stroke or um, sadness, depression, all these types of things, anxiety, all these types of things because you hear the voice of that narcissist, um, especially if it was a parent, and, and their words, um, condemning words, will ring in your ears for the rest of your life. And that's what, that's part of their tactics. This is part of a dark ball of satanic um, mindset people that will never admit it, first off. They always profess that they're Christian or whatever. That's a wonderful cover because who isn't going to forgive somebody if they make a mistake, right? In the church. Yeah, well, anyway, I just wanted to make a, a absolute reminder to you for today. Um... I'm keeping enough strength to get in, and um, if not today, tomorrow, I have to, by the 15th, re renew my driver's license. And in the past, there was a time I was so sick, I couldn't get in there to renew my driver's license, that all my hair had fallen out. Uh, long story, I mean, all kinds of bad things going on. Um, I couldn't function like I typically did, so um, I was really sick, deadly sick. So I had to go in and retake the whole test. I didn't pass it, you know. This was like about, I think I might have been about 50 when that happened to me. I finally did pass it. I was afraid to take it again. In fact, I went to another town to take the test again because I felt like I was jinxed in my town. Um, and I did pass it. So um, I can't allow uh, what's going on around me to deter me from what I need to do for myself, you know. 
and that that's my message today just watch out for it because it's coming they have no those pleasant moments in between but it's always in between i'm sorry i don't wanna just like um you know be like that and say well the person that you love that you're thinking about um or maybe several people that, oh uh, yeah, there's hope that the Spirit of God will go into these people and work on a full-fledged scale. There's always hope, and we can pray for that. But don't hold your breath because you could die. You know, just remember that this is a part of a, a behavioral patterns that these people have. So, cheers, everybody. Oh, I hope I don't spill it. Just a sec. Whoa. Mm, that was so good. Colombian coffee. I think it's the best. Um, yeah, so what I was saying is... Um, it's sad. I mean, it's like with my parents, my adopted parents, or... Uh, the father of my sons, you know, I, if you spend a decade, at least a decade or more, praying for people to, um, like, you know, and I know, if I hurt your feelings, I may not be aware of it, but most of the time I am, and you are too. If we say something stupid, we're aware that we said something stupid and that gives us the opportunity to correct that. A narcissist is not going to, number one, they're not going to admit it and they're not going to examine themselves deep enough to um, make a difference in their own lives or yours. You know, this is the way they've been since they were formed um, probably under traumatic circumstances themselves, maybe sexual abuse that they don't talk about. Um, and that is a big thing in our world. A lot of people are angry because their choice of what they wanted to do with their own sexuality was taken away from them, you know. I'm not talking about playing doctor with your little friends or something when you're tiny. Exploration years, that type of thing. Or thoughts like that when you're a kid. No, I'm talking about an adult um, uh, invading on your childhood space, taking your innocence away from you. And for the record... This includes up to 18 years old in every state that I know about. Um, people under 18 are still considered minors, and a lot of people want to ignore that fact. Like there isn't anything wrong with looking upon or flirting with or children or teens or preteens, all of it. There's a lot of sickos out there. And then you have the parents where you'll try to talk to them. You'll try to let them know something's wrong. But do you know why they ignore it? Because they had the same thing happen to them and they don't want to admit it. Or they became accustomed to the sexuality on this planet being misplaced and became a part of of that for the dark about the force of Satan and they won't say anything about it they, you'll never hear it from them because they don't care because their misplaced sexuality had become a part of them instead of disgusting them they took pleasure in it and they passed it on to the next generation even through ignorance like if you have a mother or a father and you tell them something bad happened 
and they don't dig deeper into what you're telling them, they can uh, ignore it or make excuses for it or lie about it. All kinds of reactions I've seen and heard. So, yeah, just remember that, that um, I would say more than half of the world has been sexually abused when they were children. That's a large number, but I'm just going on the people that I've personally talked to and um, the way people act, you know. That's, that's a huge number of people, and it's probably more than that. Even, even looking at a little kid the wrong way can freak a little kid out. You know, their instincts, they know what people are thinking, and so do your parents. If your parents are ignoring a pervert around you, they've had it happen to them, and they don't care. They're narcissists or psychopaths. Past. So. Yeah. So that's my message really for today. Is I mean I hate to live like this. I hate to think that nothing's ever gonna get better with people, but when they have a behavioral problem, emotional um, abnormalities. Um, a mental illness doesn't go away. It can be treated. Um, you can teach people that have these disorders how to work for themselves to better fit into society. But if they're a narcissist, they already know this. They're highly intelligent. And they're using their intelligence to um, gain their sick pleasures in their dark ways that they do that. You know, it's like uh, I've heard of people that, that will get like text me messages from the narcissists and you'll get back to them right away. But when you get a hold of them, I'm not talking about people that have like um, kids and maybe or they're, they're not feeling well in their life. I'm talking about pretty healthy people that you'll send them a text message. If they send you one, you get right back to them. Then it might take them hours or days to respond back to you, but they always expect you to get back right back to them the minute they're like, oh, did you see that? I'm like, no. And you're thinking to yourself, well, it took you three days to get back to me, so why would you expect me to respond to you in an hour or even by the end of the day? But they'll do these types of little things. Um, it, it gives them a monicum of control over you anything they can do to have that type of control over you, like um, leaving fans on and lights on or both at the same time. Um, sleep deprivation um, is something my son's going through, and I believe him because I've had that happen to me all my life. And then people will get you so upset, even as a child. Um, I'd be upset. I'd be crying. And these people that did things to me would be sleeping, like even in their lazy boys or whatever, while I was so rattled still with nobody to talk to. Um, but they pace themselves. Narcissists know how to pace themselves. And guess what? They know you don't. They, they know right when to strike. When you're tired, when you're sick. If you're sick, oh, around a narcissist, some of you know what I'm talking about. It is not pretty. Are you going to get any help? Maybe. Maybe. 
I don't think so. Usually not. If anything, they'll make it worse. Or just talk about the times they've been sick. You know, that's true. So... You ever had that? I'm sure you have. It's like, gee, I just cut myself open. I need stitches. You go and get stitches. I can't get the dishes done because I'm not supposed to put my stitches in water or whatever. Or I can't move my hand because I'll break my stitches open. And Well, I broke my leg and it took me blah, blah, to heal and that, what, yeah, but we're not talking about you here right now. I'm talking about me for once, you know. So. I am a little tired. I, I am sleep deprived. <laughs> but I decided to get up and I thought, well, I'm going to get out and water and feed those kitties, make sure they outside have everything they need, and get my exercises done. So I feel better um, just with that. I've accomplished that much. So if I get in later um, to get my license, that will be good. I'll get in there one way or another. I'll let you know when I do. Yesterday, I made buffalo chicken wings. I didn't have, I love to dunk them in blue cheese dressing, but I had sour cream. Um, that's another story. <laughs> anyway, a narcissist thing, little things they do. Um, but anyway, I don't deep fry them. I used to. But that's more calories. So now I just cook the chicken wings in the oven. And I make my buffalo sauce. Well, I did it just a lazy way. I um, threw some butter in on my wings. Poured a little vinegar. Put some hot sauce and some cayenne pepper in there to make my buffalo wing sauce. Because that's what's in it. And mixed it all together and threw it back in the oven. <clears throat> Coated that for a while. I took them out. I threw them in the free fridge to have later. And pulled them out and threw them in the oven. Warmed them up. And had a little salad alongside them. And oh, oh that's like my one of my favorite meals on the planet. Buffalo chicken wings. Oh yeah. But to cut hundreds of calories off that meal is a big deal, you know, to me. You know, like cutting down on the fat with the frying of it and all that. So, yeah. Through my bones, um, I had a bag in my sink that I put the bones in and I was going to throw them in the fire. So I went, came into my room Went back out into the kitchen and that um, Nellie, um, the mama cat, had jumped up and she had a bone almost devour devoured. I couldn't believe she was eating cayenne pepper chicken, you know. It's like, wow. I let her have the meat she had picked off. She had like three little pieces. I let her, I pushed them over towards her and told her to stay out of there and we caught her one more time up there we threw that bag in the fire i was just waiting for doug to eat and he could throw his bones in there and then we could throw it into the fire we try and burn everything that's burnable you know so because we got the stove going anyway it's just more fuel for the fire but yeah i was surprised and she liked it. I don't blame her because it was super good. Just delicious. <laughs> so, anyway. I wasn't going to make um, chicken wings yesterday. But Doug had grabbed little salamis instead of pepperonis. 
which we're going to trade back today, I think, so we can make them individual pizzas with the tortillas in a fry pan. So that's what I was going to have yesterday. But um, when that plan fell through, I was even happier because it did. I just loved my supper last night. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so it was good. A good mistake. You know, not a big deal. But um, after they had four pound bags of chicken wings that were like fourteen ninety nine, and after the Super Bowl had started, Walmart had put them down to seven something. So Doug got two bags of them, so we had like eight pounds. Now we still got quite a bit left for another time which is really cool. Next time I'll probably make more. I made like um, seven each, you know, which is pretty good. It's enough, but I could have ate them all. So <laughs> if I was mean, I would have. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, don't forget people. They don't change. It really is, uh, it, you know, if they're like my age, if they're, if they're a half a century old and they've been, you know, if they're 50-ish or whatever, it's probably a behavioral pattern that they're not going to snap out of on their own. There's nothing we can do about it. These people have been this way before we came along or whatever, depending on who it is you're thinking about. And um, they'll never change. <clears throat> like I said, the Spirit of God can go into them. We can pray for that. But um, even on their good days, don't count on the fact that they did, because there's still something there. There's hints and clues that all is not right in heaven. If you get my drift in their heaven, there's still things a little bit screwed up. And um, don't hurt your own heart waiting for them to repair. Don't hurt your own heart. Or think that God doesn't care because you've prayed and prayed for these people to heal. This is something, like I say, I've gone through with my parents and my ex and the nights and days that I spent crying and begging God to heal these people. Because when you know it's not you, you might have a reactionary measure when they do something. Or, or you're baited into, like, arguments and that aren't even arguments that become these weird with their, like, what they call word salad or their weird ways of baiting you into um, conversations that go nowhere. Even on their nicest days, they can try and cover these things up, what they do but they do do them. It, so don't don't forget, this is a reality. It's who they are. They're just, um, it's, uh, what is it called? Um, well, it, it's not quite like love bombing because that they'll do if you're like dating somebody to try and get you on their good side. You know, you're just their princess when they first meet you and whatever, you know. But then when the mask comes off, so they say, <clears throat> that's something I was going to speak on too, is pheromones and um, DNA transfers 
during sexual intercourse, actually whenever you touch somebody or they touch you, but especially if there's body fluids exchanged, you have a part of whoever you've touched, whoever they've touched, you now have a part of this community sexual orchestration by Satan that these germs, these bugs, can be used against you from the ether with the electronics in your body by the exchange of that within you. So um, the feelings that you'll have, like, it does get better the, the longer you're away from them, the less power they have over your physical body and the memories that you'll have um, that will dissipate after a while it will get better it does um, it'll come back it's a lingering thing and that's why it is um, especially if you've had children with one but um, just to remember that it's an absolute real thing that the dark force uses against people. Yeah, they do. So don't let anybody spit on you. <laughs> or worse. You know, we've heard of worse things too, right? Just imagine the things that you know about that the narcissist did to you. Think about the things you don't know about. You know, can you imagine? I can. You know, because it used to be my mind wouldn't even go there. Why would it? You know, like in places that theirs would or that they would take their bodies or whatever. They're, they're, they go places that people with God in their heart do not go. That's now a part of you. That's a darkness within you that you're now battling that you didn't even have before. And then you wonder why you're depressed. It's not a part of your natural makeup. Uh, it's a part of them that they put inside you that you're now battling because it feels alien to you. You haven't, you're their father, the devil. They're the children of dis disobedience. He's not helping you. He's not helping them either. They're always going to pay for any of these crafts, this witchcraft that they use on people anytime. They're going to pay for it one way or another. You know, might be with their health or their wealth or one way or another. They're going to get it. They're going to pay. Satan makes sure of that. They still don't care because it's just like um, one will lie and the other will swear to it type of thing. Like the brotherhood, you know. That's why a lot of like uh, Masonic affiliates will have different vile things that they'll do. And they'll overlook it for each other because it's all a part of Satan's plan. His scheme to harm other people no matter what. And as long as these people that are doing these things have uh, riches or positions in the world or something that you don't have, they'll keep doing what they're doing for that position of power, whatever they think that power is, whether it's just to control you or their need to control everything and everybody because yes they would love to rule the world would I personally not even close 
I will do the will of God. But to want to rule everybody, there isn't a human being on this planet qualified. Just remember that. So if you're, um, oh, I was going to tell you about my anxiety that I used to get real quick. Just a minute. Wow. After I had been beat on and had broken bones and all kinds of stuff, feeling really terrible about myself, um, I used to even be afraid to go out in public in a lot of places. It took so much strength. And that's why I talked like the other day about going to get a library card. <coughs> Even that, when you have anxiety or you're depressed, even that is like a, a, a feat. A, a, you conquered like a great thing. If you can pull yourself out of bed when you're not feeling good and even talk to somebody, you're a freaking superhero. Keep up the good work. Don't let them take your happy away. Never, never let these people take your smile and your love and turn you into cold and bitter and thinking that nobody loves you because that's not true. There's people out there like me that care about other people. We really, really do. We would lay down our lives for you. We would intervene in a fight and protect you. These type of people do exist in the world. They might be rare, but we're out here. There's a few of us, so don't forget that. So if you're, if you're dealing with, and I know somebody is, uh, several somebodies, depression and anxiety and um, feeling lonely and that type of thing. Two things. God loves you and so do other people. Even if other people tell you you're not lovable, you have to consider the source who's telling you that, you know, or if they treat you like you are. How lovable are they is what you have to ask yourself. If you put them in a room full of like-minded, like you and I type of people, how well received would they be in that room full of people? I'd say most likely they'd feel like a loner. They'd feel unworthy. And they would be absolutely right. <laughs> and most likely, people that recognize that type of personality wouldn't gravitate towards them. They would be pretty much on their own. So, Well, everybody, I'm going to get this uploaded. I don't know if I'll be back later. I might. Hopefully, I'll get more done today that I want to get done. And I love you all. And don't forget my words, you are worthy, God loves you. Don't, don't, um, don't let them take your happy away. You're beautiful and people love you just the way you are. Don't forget that. And we can see where you're injured and we can help give you a helping hand and pull you out of that. So, I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA. Have a good night or day wherever you're at.